first reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark. In this reading, we will hear about actually who grows and actually who cultivates all the crops. And it said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens immediately, he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. Or, but when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots our large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Our further reading is taken from the heavenly secrets. The kingdom of God, which is compared to the blade, the ear, and the full grain, is a heaven existing with a person through regeneration. For one who has been regenerated has the kingdom of God within him, and he becomes an image of the kingdom of God that is of heaven. The blade is factual knowledge, which comes first. The ear is knowledge of what is true, that develops out of that. And the full grain is the good that develops out of this. In addition, the laws laid down regarding gleanings, regarding the freedom to pluck the ears on a companion's standing grain, and also regarding the non eating of bread or of dried ears, or of green ones before they had brought a gift to God. Amen. This morning, we come before the presence of the Lord with a singing. We enter into his courts with praising his holy name. We are thankful to the Lord for his blessings and benefits we can never count. Actually, we are thankful to the Lord every day and every moment. But this morning, we have a very clear and obvious reason to offer thanks to the Lord. What is that obvious reason? We enjoy the bounty of the earth. And that's why we are thankful to the Lord, because He has given all the things we enjoy and all the things we need to function, to live on the earth. On this special day, we offer thanks to the Lord, especially for earth bounty. Those grains, crops, and fruits, vegetables, and even fresh and crispy air, and freedom we enjoy. But beyond this shelter and food, we have loved ones around us. We have close friends, and we have family members, and we have the church. The Lord has given all these benefits, all these gifts to us. As we think about many people we are thankful to, we cannot forget farmers, 
especially today. They worked very hard. They tilled and also they loosened up the soil early spring. And then when the time was right, they spread the seeds in good grounds. And that's not all. They had to supply the ground and land with water and with fertilizer. And when the time is right and the time is mature, they had to harvest. And that's how we have the great food on our tables. But actually, they couldn't water and they couldn't give sunshine if there is no any rain or dew on the ground. If there is no sun and the sunlight, they could not grow because we know that all plants, almost all of them, uh, have to do pho photosynthesis. So without sun, nothing can grow. But farmers cannot make water. And the farmers, they cannot make the sun and the light. So who has given to us and to the farmers the sun and the, the, sun and the rain and the seeds? Who made and who gave all this to us? The Lord makes the sun, the Lord makes the rain and gives the rain to those crops. So without the Lord, nothing is possible. And even farmers working very hard, but they cannot grow fruits and vegetables by themselves. I mean, they provide what's necessary to grow them, but actually they cannot grow them. They don't know how it works, all the details. Then who grows plants and trees? The Lord does. And that's why we are very thankful. And besides giving the necessary things to those plants and trees, actually the Lord grows us. Children, Though you may eat properly, you exercise regularly, you sleep well, but you cannot grow yourselves. And adults, even though we read the word, we try to understand the teachings, but we cannot grow wise. We cannot grow charitable and kind people unless the Lord grows. So even those farmers are very thankful to the Lord on this day because they clearly know without the help from the Lord, they can do nothing. And the Lord makes us better and he takes care of our spiritual growth. But we may wonder how come we are not quite successful sometimes? Even we are struggling in growing, in being better, even though the Lord grows. Do you know what kind of works and what kind of job the Lord does to help us growing? He does so many innumerable things because we are all born with our selfish love, and love to the word, and we have them as essential and part of a fundamental nature. So we are delighted and delightful in these loves, but we are more delightful and delighted in actually doing something related to these loves, belonging to these loves. So we need to remove these loves from the position, fixed position as part of our purpose of life and our end. We cannot do it. The Lord does it in infinite ways. So the heavenly doctrines point out that the way the Lord leads in infinite ways 
appears like a labyrinth to the highest angels. Simply, they don't get it. The Lord leads us from hellish states and brings us closer, closer to heavenly states. And to make that happen, because we are tied up with the heavenly societies and hellish societies in terms of what we receive, the Lord make that happen through innumerable hellish societies. So we turning away from that influx and influence, and the Lord bring us closer to heavenly state and to himself through innumerable heavenly societies. This is far more complicated and unexplainable. There's no wonder why the wisest angels don't get it. So we don't get it. But we need to cooperate with the Lord. Just the Lord cannot do it by himself. Perhaps he can do it, but there's no any result the Lord wants to get if he does every work. And the Lord doing these things very secretly and we are away from it, but our ignorance in understanding all this matter has two benefits. First of all, it's too complicated. So if we want to get involved in this matter, how we are growing and getting better, we may mess up. We may stand in his way and we may cause more troubles because it's a, just beyond our finite understanding. So we do better stay away from how the Lord leads us toward the heaven. And second, the Lord wants, to, wants us to act in our freedom. And our human beings, especially grown-ups and even children, we love our ownership. We love our autonomy. So if just the Lord forces us to do something, we may do it before him, but it doesn't stay with us. It will be gone quickly when there's no any forcing or compelling is present. So the Lord wants to leave us in our freedom, but in the meantime, the Lord does all this wonderful work behind us. But Heavenly Doctrines point out that he does very gently, very quietly. So we don't have any idea then that we do it. We understand, we receive, we implant the Lord's truth as the spiritual seeds, and we fluctify at the end. We make and we bear fruits out of this truth by doing it. I'm doing it. But the Lord does it behind the scene. But that ownership is very important so that we can do things better in our freedom and whatever we receive in our freedom can stay forever. So the Lord worked very, works very hard. At the meantime, he works very carefully not to show off what he does. And if we know clearly what the Lord does, all that small detail, perhaps I don't have to do anything because he will do everything for me. We may just sit back and wait for him to complete my regeneration and my salvation. So we'd better stay in ignorance. This is a special day. We give thanks to the Lord. Just beyond food and shelter, he has given us all these spiritual benefits. So, in the word of the Lord, we can see quite a few passages talking about seeding and harvesting. As we read this morning, there are many parables of seeds and harvest. 
And we can easily associate these parables with the kingdom of God, building the kingdom of God in our hearts and minds, in our lives. Implanting, planting seeds is symbolically mean uh, implanting the truth in our hearts and minds. But when we are in a pre-state, the Lord can implant more deeply his truth. And also, harvest represents, symbolically means, we bearing fruits. We perform good deeds. We do charitable works. At the end, we will be gathered in into heaven. So the Lord wants to explain this and want us to understand what he does. So that's why he used that very important image in the word seeding and harvesting. And even though the Lord does that amazing work for our regeneration and salvation, and we'd better stay away from it, and we'd better stay in ignorance. Think about farmers without their actually planting seeds, watering, irrigating, and also spreading fertilizers, and harvesting, and store them in. Perhaps the Lord will be very limited. The same thing in our regeneration, in our building the kingdom of God, we have jobs to do. Very simple job. We need to read the word. We need to form and develop our understanding, especially what is right and what is wrong. And we do what is right, and we stay away from what is wrong. Isn't that simple? And the rest of it, changing our internal state, moving slowly from hellish societies, our connection to heavenly societies, eventually making us angels of heaven, the Lord will take care of it. So he says, my bird is light, my yoke is easy. And by doing this simple job, the Lord can do his job, which is turning us angels of heaven. As it's a heart of today, we offer our gratitude to the Lord beyond the food and shelter because the Lord's spiritual planting seeds his truth and, but, and because the Lord does our spiritual harvesting. We read from the word, which means the end. The Lord reigns. The Lord re de let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Amen. O oh, Jesus Christ, as we see the beauty of autumn and state the earth bounty and taste the earth bounty. We acknowledge many blessings from our Heavenly Father. This harvest season is a time to reflect on our spiritual growth and ask the Lord for help and guidance. The Lord, as you grow all plants and trees, please open our hearts to receive your truth with gladness, that we may bear fruit to you in our lives, here and in your heavenly kingdom forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.